so I have to have to talk about the news that has sent shockwaves across London has made a certain breed of black boy who likes their um, snow bunnies it's made a certain type of black woman who likes a certain type of you know racially ambiguous individuals it's made startup founders worried it's made hr girls sweaty under their pits and it's generally generally caused a disturbance across the london sphere and it's this particular news courtesy of the hackney gazette regarding box park shortage box park shortage is due to close at the end of summer can you believe that one of the premier spots to hang out in to pick up some slaws finger bang some hoes eat some shitty food chow down some fried chicken watch england play scream and shout at your fucking mates you know have a quote unquote meeting at your startup this essential place in london is now closing down at the end of summer how how sad how sad box park shortage was honestly a peak destination place in some way that I spent a lot of my time, especially when I used to work in that particular area of East London or EC London, East Central London. And um, when I used to work in particular startups, whether they were in Old Street at that Silicon Roundabout thing, I'm not sure if it's even called Silicon Roundabout, but that's what it used to be called. That whole area next to that coffee shop around that roundabout where Old Street is and where um, Argos is. If you know, you know. So that whole entire place, there was, you know, that was kind of where you went to go and, you know, maybe hang out, drink some beers, eat some food, maybe buy some gums, maybe go to an activation, maybe go to another activation that had free beer or whatever it may be. Like it was an actual bit of a spot, an actual place to hang out. But I found that since I've stopped working there in that area and since most of my work has been relegated to working on a laptop from home and since I don't usually go out for the most part, I don't necessarily tend to go out of my way to go to Box Park. I'm not going to lie. Um, the only times I've ever considered going to Box Park is when I've seen events like Recess, but they do those in like Wim like Croydon, Wimbledon and a few other places. But any type of like, you know, black focused party maybe i've considered going to box park but i've never in the last few years ever considered crossing my mind that i would actually go to box park outside of the times when i was working in that area so to me it's not the biggest miss but i know a few people who love that area who love going there who love sitting in these converted cargo containers in this almost open air lego imperium right where all these young millennial types hang around and zoomers and shit and exchange numbers and cute glances and cross their legs with their shitty hiking air force no their shitty hiking converses and shit they're going to be distraught they're really going to be distraught but this is crazy news especially when you consider the lack of options we have in london to go out i saw a post recently on some instagram page where this guy was obviously bragging and trying to show off more but he was basically like oh man there's nothing to do if you're a millionaire and you're a londoner he said oh man i'm a millionaire i'm a londoner i've got nothing to do i'm bored everything is dead there's no motives no nothing it's like mm, you're just trying to show off that you got money but there's loads of stuff to do if you have money if anything london's one of those weird places where it's probably not the most spontaneous city in the world and that's why probably when i first started going berlin that's why i was so enamored with that city and that's why i was so gassed when i went there and i wouldn't stop talking about it and when i went to primavera went to barcelona for the first time i was the same way when i went to madrid for the first time i was the same way even when i went to paris for like the third or fourth time in fashion week i was the same way because i think other cities in europe have way more spontaneity whereas you can kind of like fall into motives you can be at a coffee store you could someone could compliment your shoes because they're nice and they're not stush like people in london are they could give you a compliment on your jacket they might mention something about your hair about your hat and then suddenly you're talking to another group of people you get brought into another group of people you meet them outside at some art gallery thing they take you to some other bar and then suddenly you're at some rave somewhere and then suddenly you're smashing some 20 you know eight-year-old person in their bedroom somewhere you know what i mean it could go that quickly but i feel like in london unless you have money unless you have money you can't be in certain places unless you have connections you can't be in certain places unless you have a ticket unless you have a ticket unless you have a ticket right you don't go in anywhere you don't go anywhere you don't go anywhere 
there's no going for you any no spontaneity so some of these spots like box park although they're very commercial although they're not the best places to hang out at least it's something it's in a somewhat open air environment it's in one of the best places to be in London if you want to go out because it's kind of in the center. So if you do run, if, if, if you do, if you're there from like open to close, I forgot what time it actually closes. Maybe it's like 9 p.m. I don't know what time it actually closes with the with the bars and the restaurants in there. But if you're there until, let's say, 6 p.m., you've, you're right in the center and you've got every, you know, you can go anywhere you want, south, north, west, whatever it may be. So it's a great location for that. And in general, even in the surrounding areas, there's loads of great places to go and hang out and have some funs late at night. But that's usually a good meeting point to chill at. And I think that whole entire area anyway, from Brick Lane to Shoreditch to back to kind of maybe Bethnal Green, Cambridge Heath High Roadways, all the way up until like dawson type of area, all that whole area has been transformed partially because of Box Park. So this commercial quasi independent thing that was going on there kind of rejuvenated that area i'm not gonna lie because you know the rest of it is kind of shit and like that whole liverpool street strip is terrible sure just basically died most of the bars and pubs there aren't really popping as much as they once were which is a real shame by the way sure high street used to be so much fun um used to be a place to really go like i remember when i was going out in east a lot i would start my nights out i would literally start my nights at liverpool street station i'd maybe go to the spoons outside liverpool street station or the bars around there and literally walk all the way up go going from bar to bar just walking all the way up hitting box park going up to fucking i don't know whatever bar that's in the before the junction that you get to go to dawson and then just continuing up all the way maybe until you get to fucking um what's that place it might be stoke newton or something that's how far you'd go throughout your night but nowadays i don't think the shortest strip there's many cool bars to go to anyway um there was the, i forgot what i forgot, I forgot what it was called i think it was called a pattern cutting was it called a coloring book or something i forgot what it was called there was a bar in shortage that was actually pretty decent um maybe it was called the print factory or something i forgot what the name of it was but it was a quite a nice little bar but it also had a, 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 a basement club area but that ended up closing so there's not many spaces to go and just chill and hang. So Box Park was a vibe. So it's a shame to hear it's closing, actually. I'm not going to lie. Um, even though I don't go there anymore, and even though it's probably something that I would, wouldn't would see me dead at, to be completely honest, the people that do go are going to be absolutely distraught when they find out that this place is no more. Courtesy of the Hackney Gazette. It says, Box Park is set to close in Shoreditch site at the end of summer and hopes to give its customers an unforgettable farewell. The East London venue, which Box Parks describe as the world's first pop-up mall, which is very true to be fair, will shut its doors after 12 years. It's been 12 years. Damn, bro. It feels like just yesterday I was in there, bro. You know what I mean? That like finger banging some random behind the stool somewhere or trying to fucking grab a munch at Cook's Daily. By the way, Cook's Daily, oh, I think Cook's Daily, that vegan restaurant, might have been the spot, might have been the place that legitimately inspired a bunch of people, especially blacks in London, to go vegan. I swear to God, Cook's Daily was so good. Cook's Daily was the fucking spot. It was this Asian dude that would cook like, you know, Asian versions of dishes, but then just cook them with vegan stuff. And it was so good. Again, maybe it wasn't the most healthiest. I, I'm, I'm sure looking back, I'm sure if we investigate and we dig deep into some of these noodles or some of this vegan katsu curry shit that he was serving, I'm sure it wasn't the most healthy. But as a vegan alternative to get you into eating, you know, vegan options or whatever they may be and doing away with having fucking fried food all the flipping time, this guy did a good job. He did a fucking good job. And allegedly he's got his own restaurant actually opened up somewhere. I think it's like on Hanbury Street actually. So it's not in a box park anymore. But I remember I used to absolutely devour, devour the stuff at Cook's Daily. But it was so bussing. It was so popular. You had to order your food ahead of time on an app. I forgot if it was like on Uber or some website. No, I think it was a website. They had like a little website and you would order your food ahead of time and they'll have slots or quantities. I don't know how they did it, but essentially you had to order basically once you got in at work and then get your thing already prepped so that when you went there, you're just going to collect it because if you tried to roll up and order something, by the time you got there, everything was flipping ran out. So big up the guy that invented Cook's Daily. That guy's a fucking G and legitimately changed my 
you know, blew my mind palate wise and introduced me to vegan cooking and to the point where I was like, you know what, I could eat this on a daily, especially if I was being able to cook meals to this level. So big up cooks daily, big up cooks daily. Going back to the article. However, Box Park is also gearing up to open two new locations in Camden and Liverpool Street, set to launch later this year. So, some good and bad news. For people like myself who hate Liverpool Street, who think all the finance guys and recruitment people that live and work around those areas, right? All the people with the fucking um, down vest things that they wear and shit, and the tucked in shirts, and the weird haircuts, and the fucking really tight trousers, and the really tight suits, and the girls with the LV bags, and the tight and the fucking loafers and the hair right always going to MS with their fucking lunch bags all that, that whole scene of people i know some of you hate them i hate them it's going to be interesting to see the mix of like hipsters scene kids fashionistas and shit wannabe influencers clashing with some of the finance bros and gals and recruitment boys and gals it's going to be so funny if they do open up this space liverpool street because liverpool street is a very you know that's where all the finance and recruitment type of places are it's a bit stuffy i think there's a there's a duck and waffle in liverpool street isn't there i think there's a duck and waffle so that kind of shows you what type of vibe liverpool street is at so all those duck and waffle man them and gal them they're going to be clashing with the guys and girls who like to wear like bust up sambas and shit and baggy jeans with timberlands and stuff so it's going to be really funny to see those two worlds clashing and colliding on a night out um, we might actually get some interesting things because, you know, people accuse Box Park of being the place where a lot of um, mixed race babies were born. A lot of um, interracial relationships were birthed from Box Park. Um, you know, people that would never, ever meet blacks were meeting them all at fucking Box Park. And blacks that would never, ever meet certain white ladies were meeting them all at Box Park, especially if you're kind of clapped. If you're clapped as a black dude and you're not getting no love from, you know, other black women, usually a good place to go to kind of give yourself a little bit of confidence was to go to Box Park and just start lipsing up some any, you know, HR girl, receptionist girl for some shitty startup who would give you a bit of love because you were a little bit exciting. You had a bit of spice to your eyes. You feel me? <laughs> but now that's going to be gone. So I wonder what type of interracial relationships we're going to have with people that work in the finance area. It's going to be funny to see. Since its opening its doors in October 2011, the Shoreditch site has provided a platform for more than 250 independent businesses. Boxpark also said it's attracted more than 1.5 million, million visitors per year. Its closure comes after the landlords in Bishop Gapes God's Yard secured planning permission to redevelop the 4.5 acre um, site into a new residential retail and leisure district. You know what it's going to end up looking like, right? It's just going to end up looking like every other horrible residential retail leisure district that exists in london it's going to be just the mountainous obscene tall structures of glass and steel that's what you're going to see you're going to see crazy glass and steel you're going to see pret a manger you're going to see starbucks you're going to see some quasi independent store there that really isn't independent you're going to see fake food trucks like you know what it's going to look like it's going to look fucking horrible stale bland with lacking personality and even box park even though box park was kind of commercial wasn't the most independent thing at least it tried at least at least it cosplayed as being a little bit rough and being a little bit diy right using the whole cargo container things as a place to kind of house all these independent businesses having them all open up on the street the way they design them having places where you can go and watch games and stuff and you know um cinemas and whatever it may they may be and there's loads of different restaurants and bars to go and drink at and hangout spaces and it was just a cool place to go and jam at and now you're just going to have a really sterile and dead leisure residential and retail district that's just going to take all the love all the vav all the vavavoom away from box park because the, the funny thing about box park across the road is shoreditch house isn't it that's the interesting thing about box park so box park was a good place to be because it was kind of like a, a good little primer sometimes if you were lucky if you had the gift of the gab if you were good with talking if you were good with the riz you could maybe you know get speaking to somebody at work at shoreditch house and get yourself put on a list so you could actually go in there and have a good time after when that place closed you could go in there and have a good time even though it's a members only club and shit so that contrast was actually pretty cool to have shoreditch house on one side of the road and have box park on the other side side of the road now you're just gonna have shoreditch house and this sterile retail district place like horrible also imagine wanting to live there and the weird thing about it this is where gentrification is so lame 
people will move to Shoreditch or move to this site where Box Park is because they love Box Park. They'll be, oh my God, I can't, I would love to live in this area. They'll move to the area, then they'll complain about the noise and get the clubs and the bars shut down or get them to limit how high they can put the volume. It's like, bro, you moved here because of this area. You moved here because of the vibes, because of the tunes, them, because of the fucking electricity, because of the nightlife, because of the scene. And now you want to limit the scene. You want to take it away. Like, why go on for this? I couldn't imagine. Honestly, if I had um, if I had that kind of money to buy a place in Shoreditch on that street, when I have that kind of money, not if, when, words are intention, intention are words, the last place I'd live is fucking Shoreditch High Street. Like, miss me with that shit. But maybe it's just me. Box Park was only a temporary occupier for the site during the last 12 years. Now that it's reached the expiration date of its lease, works will immediately start for the site's redevelopment. Box Park Chief Executive Simon Champion said that he'll return to Shoreditch um, as soon as we find the right opportunity, and that is already talking to stakeholders about a new offering for Shoreditch customers. He said, while our time at the current site at Shoreditch is coming to an end, we look forward to celebrating all that we have achieved at the venue over the last summer. In the remaining time we have left at Shoreditch, we will work as hard as possible to support our team with the transition and aim to relocate our 30 plus tenants and their staff from the other sites while giving all the wonderful customers unforgettable farewell. That's pretty cool. They're basically going to relocate everybody that's still there at the moment. That's pretty nice of them, to be fair. I guess they want to remain, they want to keep that long term relationship with people that have done well by them, right? They don't want to have retailers who are not selling garms and shit and not bringing people through to Box Park. But the fact that they're keeping them on is pretty cool. I'm interested to see what they're going to do for their farewell race, actually. That might be actually a good time to actually go back to Box Park, give it a good send off. I might actually have to go and put on my best fucking startup outfit on. I mean, figure out what people are wearing nowadays and go to the last rave. Um, Box Park claimed that the site was supported more than 270 jobs per year. Besides the new London sites, the company is also making steps to extend their reach outside the capital. Plans to debut in Bristol in 2025. Box Park founder Roger Wade said Shoreditch Box Park journey has been unforgettable. He said, we will close this chapter. My gratitude goes out to all the dedicated staff, local community for their unwavering support throughout the years so yeah big up box park man gone but never forgotten opening two sites liverpool street and camden coming soon but the iconic the legendary box park shortage is no more the legendary box park shortage is no more all the black boys who like white women are crying 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 into their urban outfitters outfits right now they are crying literally tears are streaming down their face as they wipe it with their urban outfitter sweatshirts it is with shame it is a damn damn shame